So we are in the UNCG Auditorium. Completed construction in 1928 and opened that same year. Um, it, was cre it was built here in Greensboro to not only be a showcase for the North Carolina College of Women campus, as we were known at that time, but it was one of the largest auditoriums in Greensboro at that time. So there are some great stories about this building, and it's fantastic that it, it is well documented. But in order to tell you the stories, I need to tell you a little bit about the man who gives us the origin of the stories. And that is Raymond Taylor. He was affiliated with the drama department um, from about 1921 to about 1960 here on campus. So he is the one who really built up the drama productions here, created the Play Likers, um, is the one who eventually created the Burns Fill uh, Playhouse up in the mountains. So this building, like I said, was built in 1928. And having been here since 1921, Mr. Taylor was very familiar with this part of campus. Prior to this building's construction, there had been a house on this site. Um, and when the occupant there, the story goes that there is an occupant of the house, an older woman, who hung herself in the attic. And that is the origin of the ghost. So Mr. Taylor would have known about that incident. And then when the auditorium was completed construction, and he had his office here, he tells several stories of encounters uh, with this ghost. Um, the, one of the more dramatic ones takes place in, in August. So it was August in North Carolina. You know, it's hot. It's humid, the air is just sticky. Um, Mr. Taylor and another staff member were going to stay late. They needed to finish painting some backdrops for a theatrical production. So they did. Uh, they closed up the building, locked the doors. He took off his clothes down to his undershirt, uh, went down to the workshop, and he and the other fellow, they painted, they built, they worked all night in that hot August sticky heat we have in North Carolina. So after doing all that work, he was ready to go home, goes back up to his office, opens his office door, and instead of finding his clothes stacked neatly where he had left them, he found those just scattered across his, his office. Not only that, Mr. Taylor was a very dapper dresser in that he always had a pocket watch, and the chain of his pocket watch had been put in the shape of a cross. So he knew there was somebody inhabiting these halls. A few other times that he would be working late at night, he would hear footsteps coming down the hallway. And of course, puzzled, because he should have been the only person in the building, he'd come out of his office. There was nobody there. But then he'd hear chains rattling in the distance. There was another occasion where he was having a meeting with a faculty member and it was a closed door meeting you know they're discussing very um, private matters and so had the door completely shut they were having their conversation and again this is before there was central air put into the building all of a sudden the door just burst open with a cold rush of air comes into the room and then he could hear laughing in the distance <laughs> Mr. Taylor was convinced this building had a spirit in it. My experience has not been inside the building. My experience has been outside the building. One of the fun aspects of my job is that I get to give a haunted tour of campus. And so again, this was in August, beginning of the semester. I had a group of uh, freshman students who were going on this tour. It's a fun way to teach history while also telling some ghost stories. Uh, we were outside um, near Spring Garden Street and I was just retelling the story about Mr. Taylor and his scattered clothes. And as I was telling it, a young woman at the back of the group screamed. And then all of a sudden, there was this movement of students through the group. And what happened was this cold burst of air just shot through us from the back of the group towards me at the front. And simultaneously, as a 
as a unit, we all looked up and sure enough, in one of the upper windows, there was a light that flickered on and off. And I think it was the way the ghost, just to say, hello, checking in on you.